We live in a world that is filled with electronic devices that sense and interact with us. In tech terms, this is called the Internet of Things. There are many companies that are trying to fill the need to teach and prepare the next generation of designers, builders, and programmers. But none has done it quite so well as Arduino. Arduino is an open source electronics platform initially designed to allow students with no experience in electronics and programming to easily prototype products that actually work. At the core of Arduino is a simple microcontroller, think mini computer. Through a series of inputs and outputs and some simple coding, the Arduino lets electronics interact with the world. Arduino is simple enough for beginners to easily learn how to build and program, but complex enough that it can be useful to even the most experienced electrical engineers. Phil Tarone of Adafruit.com, a popular online store and resource for hackers, tinkerers, and designers, explained that Arduino is a fantastic tool for getting people doing the things that they want to do with electronics. And Massimo Banzai, one of Arduino's founders, described it as the equivalent of sketching on paper, only with electronics. Arduino users are creating some amazing things from self-managing gardens that monitor and log temperatures and moisture content while automatically watering, to self-strumming guitars that can be programmed for different songs. Arduinos have been used to create 3D printers, run low-cost UAV for oceanographic research, fine-tune car engines, build and run unmanned model airplanes, and make some pretty sweet robots. In the future world of the Internet of Things, where electronics are connected, sense the world around them, and interact with us, Arduino is the starting point. Due to its low price point, it is a great tool to prepare students to be not only passive participants in the world of Internet of Things, but active contributors. Arduino microcontrollers are currently being used at all levels of education. Arduino has developed a course called Creative Technologies in the Classroom 101, aimed at youth ages 13 through 17, that can be purchased, including courseware, hardware, and software, for $2,000 American. One high school teacher who uses Arduino in his classroom explained that it can be used in the classroom to teach students electronics, it can teach them how to think, and how to work as a team. Nathan Seidel, founder and former CEO of SparkFun.com, one of the greatest resources and stores for all things electronics and open source hardware, said, If Arduino and electronics could be taught in high school, I think there's a bright future not only for engineers, but also artists and digital media interactive designers. If they can learn that in high school, imagine how much more they can do later in life. Arduino as a company is a perfect fit for the educational aspirations of students and teachers who want to make sure the future of interactive electronics is bright. In the early 2000s, Massimo Banzai was working at the Interaction Design Institute in Iberia, Italy. In an effort to create a cheap and easy tool to allow students to prototype interactive products, he and a group of others designed the Arduino microcontroller. The team that would launch Arduino as a commercial product came together one step at a time. Massimo first started working on the hardware with microchip researcher David Cotillas. Then, student David Mellis joined to help write the code for the chip. When exploring the potential marketability of the product, Tom Ego, an American professor, was brought on board because of his business connections. And then finally, Gianluca Martino joined the team to spearhead the mass production of the boards. In 2005, the first batch of 200 boards were produced, and it's been onwards and upwards ever since. What is different about this company is that it does not follow traditional business models. There are no trade secrets or patents. Arduino is all open source hardware, meaning the designs are made publicly available so anyone can study, modify, manufacture, distribute, and sell the microcontroller. Initially, this may sound like a stupid business decision, but as explained by Clive Thompson of Wired.com, the founders suspected that if Arduino were open, it would inspire more interest and more free publicity than a piece of proprietary closed hardware. What's more, excited geeks would hack it and, like Linux fans, contact Arduino team and offer improvements. They would capitalize on this free work and every generation of the board would be better. And this is exactly what happened. So, why would you invest in Arduino? Their initial run of boards was just 200. Selling these at a low cost, only making one euro in profit per board, they tested the waters. They sold like hotcakes. In early 2006, one online retailer decided to pick up the product and sold 6,000 units that year. The next year, they sold 40,000 Arduinos. When Tom Ego first approached SparkFun.com about selling Arduinos, they were reluctant. He actually had to persuade them a second time, from which they agreed to take 20 boards to see how they'd sell. By 2010, SparkFun.com had sold over 40,000 boards. David Catellus explained that in an interview in 2010 that there were over 130,000 users. This trend for growth has only gone up. 
Though it is hard to find solid data for current sales of Arduino units, the traffic on their website is another indicator of their success. Arduino.cc is both store and resource for all things Arduino. It currently gets over 15 million hits a month. Some critics might say that going open source has only weakened the financial potential of this product and the company that founded it, but the opposite is true. They decided only to protect the name so people could tell what is Arduino and what isn't. In the world of Arduino-based microcontrollers, the certified brand name boards are seen as the best in quality and the most advanced and supported. We live in a day when brand matters. To help you further understand why Arduino is a great investment for someone who wants to influence the future educational technology market, let's use a cube analysis that looks at four different factors that influence the, a company. The first phase of the cube analysis is market focus. This asks us to look at who is the intended target of the product. What makes Arduino a great investment is that it targets multiple markets. For example, K-12 technology programs have been targeted by the CTC 101 course they offer, universities and higher educational institutions that have design, electronic, and programming programs are potential buyers because of the versatility of the microcontroller. Finally, there is a market among individuals interested in the maker movement as well as designers and entrepreneurs looking to design and sell the next hit Internet of Things product. The second phase of the cube framework is the type of offerings a company provides. When it comes to Arduino, it is primarily offering customers content in the form of hardware, software, and learning resources. When an individual, school, district, or any other organization buys from Arduino, they remain tied to the company via the software needed to run the Arduino. Though this does not guarantee more purchases, it will increase the possibility. The third phase asks, who is buying the product? Again, what Arduino excels at is its broad reach. Because of its low cost, many individuals choose to buy one for their own learning. In a school setting, a teacher could purchase a whole set for a class. A school could buy the CTC 101 course, or even larger organizations like districts or governments could do the buying. Phase four asks what part of the world is the target? And for Arduino, the answer is every part. Arduino was founded by a group of five people from four different countries. It is still produced in Italy, but it is sold and shipped to every corner of the globe. The market status of the DIY microcontroller, the next question for phase five in the cube analysis is rife with tales of prosperity. There are numerous examples of successful open source hardware firms. What they have in common is matching their free designs with a strong branding. Finally, phase six, competition. Arduino has lots of competitors, and to be honest, they have made sure of that by giving away their design and research to all for free. This competition only grows the market, in which Arduino is seen as the best option. Many of the copycat devices are substandard and actually push users towards the trusted history behind the device's original designers, Arduino. In conclusion, you should invest in Arduino. Why? It is a leading edge educational technology that will prepare students for the reality of the Internet of Things world. As the original designers of this product, Arduino is the industry standard for quality and innovation. Looking at their success makes it clear that they will be a sound educational technology investment for many years to come.